This is disgusting, unaccountable bias. I agree that the text messages raise concern. Breaking news. If Congress sends me a bill before Christmas, Americans will see lower taxes and bigger paychecks beginning in February. CNN's Anderson Cooper had some little explaining to do today. Oh, really? You endorsed him, you tool, pathetic loser. It has been. I'm Heather Childers. Let's get straight to that top story for you. The man overseeing the investigation into President Trump fiercely defending special counsel Robert Mueller despite tons of text showing blatant anti-Trump bias from inside Mueller's team. Todd Pyro here live with some new details unfolding. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Heather. The public trust is gone. That's the message from Republican members of Congress to the man in charge of the man investigating President Trump. A trove of Trump-hating text messages raising deep and troubling questions about the political motivations of the probe. But out of the more than 10,000 texts, it's a single one that dominated Rod Rosenstein's hearing and now is the attention of congressional investigators. Sent August 2016 from now former FBI agent Peter Strzok to his lover and FBI lawyer Lisa Page writing, I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Andy's office that there's no way he gets elected. But I'm afraid we can't take that risk. The problem with that? Well, Republicans say it speaks to a possible government conspiracy. This guy thought he was super agent James Bond at the FBI. Rosenstein pressed on another exchange, struck writing, just went to a Southern, if we could scroll the prompter there, that would be great, Southern Walmart, I could smell the Trump support. Page texting back, yep, out to lunch with redacted, we both hate everyone and everything, just riffing on the hot mess that is our country, struck responding, yeah, it's scary real down here. If you have those Walmart shopping Trump voters that Peter Strzok so derided in his text messages, how do they react to that? Do they have confidence in their FBI and their Department of Justice? We have appropriate internal affairs officers who will get to the bottom of that. Now the messages began in the summer of 2015, not long after Strzok led the Clinton private email server probe and continued while the presidential race was in full swing. These text messages not affect a person's work. Congressman Jim Jordan demanding a second special counsel investigate whether Strzok's political beliefs affected decisions at the DOJ. Heather, this thing just gets deeper yeah, and deeper. It really is something and disappointing. So I guess outside of the D.C. bubble, when you shop at Walmart, you smell different. I, I mean, yeah, you smell like a hardworking American. I went to Walmart a couple weeks ago yeah, for Christmas things. Me and, too. You know. <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Todd. Okay. We're going to continue to have more on this, of course. Uh, Congressman Jim Jordan, he actually appeared on the story last night continuing to push for accountability from Peter Strzok. He needs to be in front of the Judiciary Committee ASAP. We need, we, first we need to bring him in and depose him. Then we need to put him in the same seat Rod Rosenstein set today. And we need to ask him questions in front of God and everybody so the American people can see what this guy was up to. This guy who thought he was James Bond, this super agent guy at the FBI, he needs to be right there answering our questions. That's what needs to happen. And we've talked to Chairman Goodlatte about subpoenaing him, Andrew McCabe, Lisa Page, and Bruce Orr. All four of those people need to be subpoenaed and brought in front of the committee answering this these questions that we're asking. Well, some other news happening today for a moment. A city rocked by deadly riots, bracing for more unrest today. Police in downtown Charlottesville, Virginia, they're planning to block streets as massive crowds are expected to turn out for the court hearing of James Fields Jr. Well, he is accused of plowing his car into a crowd of protesters at a white nationalist rally in August. A 32-year-old Heather Heyer was killed. Fields is charged with second degree murder. Three other men charged in connection with the riot will also be in court. And the New York City terrorist who wanted to be a suicide bomber could face life in prison. Akayad Ullah, a chain migrant from Bangladesh, making his first court appearance by video from his hospital bed. A judge denying him bail. Prosecutors say that Ullah wanted to kill as many people as possible in the name of ISIS when he detonated a pipe bomb inside a subway passage in Times Square. He ended up being the only one seriously injured. Thank goodness. 
President Trump making a final push to get tax reform wrapped up by Christmas, promising bigger paychecks for American workers as early as February if GOP leaders can reach a deal. Uh, Griff Jenkins live for us in Washington, D.C. with what is happening behind the scenes. Good morning, Griff. <laughs> good morning, Heather. You know, most Americans aren't used to getting good news from the IRS, but as the Republican overhaul of the nation's tax system becomes pretty much imminent, the president took an opportunity to highlight a statement put out by the Revenue Service. If Congress sends me a bill before Christmas, the IRS, this is just out, this is breaking news, has just confirmed that Americans will see lower taxes and bigger paychecks beginning in February. And GOP leaders in the House and the Senate have reached an agreement in principle on what this bill looks like. So here's some of the major takeaways we expect. First, it slashes the corporate rate from 35% to 21% instead of the 20% as originally planned. It cuts the top individual rate of 39.6% to 37%. It caps the state and local tax deductions at $10,000, giving them some flexibility across property and income or sales taxes. This fix presumably satisfying the high tax states like New York, New Jersey, and California who are most affected, and it repeals the Obamacare individual mandate. Now, this conference bill between the House and Senate, or report as it's called, is due out tomorrow for all of us to see, but don't expect any Democrats to support it, as Ron Wyden calls it a betrayal. This is the ultimate betrayal of the middle class. It doesn't give middle class Americans the tax cuts they deserve now and it takes away Medicare and Social Security later. So it's never a done deal until it's done, Heather. But by all accounts, it appears the House and Senate plan to vote on this early next week and try and reach the president's desk by Christmas. We will see what happens. All right, we'll see if it's a Christmas present, if it's what, what is it? You either get coal under the tree or in your stocking or you get a gift, right? <laughs> or a tax cut. <laughs> exactly. All right, thank you so much, Griff. Have a great day. Well, President Trump calling Doug Jones to congratulate him on his Alabama Senate upset, even inviting him to the White House. But one person still hasn't called the senator-elect. That's his opponent, Roy Moore, who is still refusing to concede. In this race, we have not received the final count to include military and provisional ballots. This has been a very close race, and we are awaiting certification by the Secretary of State. Well, Republicans say that they will not stall their tax reform vote for Jones, despite pleas from Democrats. Alabama's Secretary of State says the earliest the election can be finalized is the day after Christmas. That's when President Trump hopes to have the bill signed. Well, Minnesota's Lieutenant Governor will replace disgraced Senator Al Franken, even though he hasn't officially resigned. A Democrat, Tina Smith, stepping onto the national stage to finish out Franken's term, but it's not clear exactly when she will take over. Franken announced that he would resign last week following an avalanche of sexual misconduct allegations. Every fallen hero in Arlington National Cemetery will be honored this Christmas thanks to generous viewers like you. A wreath across America reaching its fundraising goal to place a wreath on every grave totaling nearly a quarter of a million. And the director making the case right here on Fox and Friends First to never forget the price of freedom. When they pay the ultimate sacrifice, you know, we really feel like, you know, it is time for us as Americans to stand up to make sure they're not forgotten and to continue on with their legacy. Thank you so much to all of the Fox News viewers. Our volunteers will lay the recent ceremonies on Saturday at more than 1,200 locations across the country. And it's only 11 days until Christmas. That is so hard to believe. And this age old question, it is still up for debate. What's Christmas really about? Vengeance! Nine percent celebrated with religious traditions, but this year, that's dropped to 55 percent. It's kind of sad. We want you to brew on this. There are too many Americans actually forgetting the meaning of Christmas. Let us know what you think. Log on to our Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram to let us know. And the time now is about 10 minutes after the top of the hour. Uh, the deputy attorney general standing strong behind the Mueller investigation, despite overwhelming evidence of anti-Trump bias. The president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton, was key in getting those text messages to the surface. And he joins us live up next. 
And Bo talked about your dad's courage, not about illness, but about his courage. And an emotional moment between Meghan McCain and former Vice President Joe Biden as news is breaking this morning on her dad, Senator John McCain. And first, Rudolph. This is unbelievable. And I'm here to tell you, Mr. Rosenstein, I think the public trust in this whole thing is gone. You're the guy in charge. You could disband the Mueller special prosecutor and you can do what we've all called for. Appoint a second special counsel to look into this, to look into Peter Strzok, Bruce Orr, everything else we've learned in the last several weeks. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein grilled on Capitol Hill over allegations of bias in the Mueller probe and now calls for an investigation into the investigators are growing louder by the minute as anti-President Trump texts from an FBI agent are revealed. So is it time for another investigation? Here now to weigh in is the president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton. Tom, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. I certainly appreciate it. I know you were on late last night with us here on Fox. Oh, uh, right. I want to get straight to this segment with you, though, because we have limited time to continue on what uh, Jim Jordan was just saying there in some of the back and forth that went on in the hearing. In reference to Bruce Orr, here's what he had to say. If you guys paid Christopher Steele at the same time the Democrats in the Clinton campaign were painting, or if you took the dossier, dressed it all up, took it to the FISA court, and used that as the basis to get warrants, are you concerned? I mean, this is what a lot of Americans are believing right now, and I certainly do, that the Comey FBI and the Obama Justice Department worked with one campaign to go after the other campaign. All right, so Bruce Orr, high-ranking DOJ official, his wife, Nellie, was paid by Fusion GPS for this dossier. So was there collusion between the DOJ and the FBI? Well, there was collusion between the DOJ, the FBI, and the dossier creators, Fusion GPS, and Hillary Clinton's campaign, and the Democratic National Committee. It was a seamless web, all designed, as the congressman suggests, to target President Trump. And uh, the question is, who paid who and when and what? I, you know, those are real questions that need to be answered, especially as this dossier looks like uh, was the basis, perhaps, for warrants that were used to spy on the Trump team and are now being pursued by Robert Mueller. I, I would put a pause on the Mueller investigation in the least. I've been calling on it to be shut down for months until we figure out what's going on. That's what I wanted to ask you. And when you say put a pause on the investigation, do you think that another special counsel should be appointed? Something like that. We need an independent analysis of what went on here. I think the collusion that we ought to be concerned about is the collusion we talked about, which is the mm -hmm. Justice Department and FBI under President Obama working with Hillary Clinton's campaign hand in glove to spy on the incoming president. And then we have these texts that came out that are just incredible, where you have the number two official of the FBI, Andy McCabe, along with Peter Strzok, evidently having a meeting about the campaign or the election, and Strzok walking away from that meeting with an idea or having an idea about an insurance policy in case President Trump's elected. Yeah, that this was unbelievable. What do you think that text meant? I mean, the text uh, went along something along the lines of what you said, the insurance policy. What do you think that was? Well, it wasn't a Geico policy. Yeah. Uh, this was the counterintelligence, one of the top FBI agents, special agents responsible for counterintelligence. You can bet he was involved in the FISA warrants. You can bet it. And certainly he was also involved in the Hillary Clinton investigation. Uh, it, the Justice Department and FBI are compromised up the wazoo, and mm -hmm. the problem is that Rod Rosenstein is testifying yesterday as if we'll wait for the IG report. In the meantime, Mueller is going forward like a steamroller, right. indicting, getting plea deals, Based on what? Yeah. Corrupt acts from the Obama administration that continued into the Trump administration and by the deep state of, gang? Yeah, and speaking of just rolling forward, uh, part of the hearing yesterday, I think it was Chabot, he went one by one of all the Democratic donors that Mueller has appointed to his team. And then when he finished doing that, he said this, and whether or not uh, Rosenstein could look him in the eye. I think we have that as well. How with a straight face? Can you say that this group of Democrat partisans are unbiased and will give President Trump a fair shake? We recognize we have employees with political opinions, and it's our responsibility to make sure those opinions <clears throat> do not influence their actions. <clears throat> Pardon me. And so uh, 
I, I believe that Director Mueller understands that and that uh, he is running that office appropriately, recognizing that people have political views, but ensuring that those views are not in any way a factor in how they conduct themselves in office. Oh. So why appoint them to begin with if you know that not only do they donate their wives themselves, they were actually members of, of Hillary, team, Hillary teams to get her into office? Well, Andrew Weissman, whose uh, email we obtained uh, a few, uh, last week, he was sending emails to uh, Sally Yates, who was the acting attorney general, uh, an anti-Trumper. He mm -hmm. attended Hillary Clinton's campaign election night. He's the number two of the Mueller Justice Department. If Mr. Rosenstein is correct, then the attorney general, Mr. Sessions, shouldn't have recused himself yeah. because he could have kept politics out of his job as well. It's the appearance issue. And yeah. it seems, isn't it interesting, it only works to keep someone like Sessions away from doing his job and not all these partisan Democrats. So just quickly, yeah. we took a look at the hires that Mueller made, the attorneys. Right. As best we could tell, there are no registered Republicans, 10 registered Democrats. Wow. I mean, Tom, thank you so much. I could talk to you forever, but we've run out of time. Thank uh, you. I want you to let us know what's coming up next because you're always ahead of it. And none of this would happen, be happening without Judicial Watch, I don't think. Thank you for joining us this morning. You're welcome. And we will be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Fox and Friends First. CNN anchor Anderson Cooper at the center of a major controversy thanks to a colorfully worded tweet about President Trump. Now, this came from his account, what you're seeing right there, but CNN says wasn't him. Social media not buying it, though. Carly Shimkus with Fox News headlines 24-7, Sirius XM 115, here with reaction. Carly, it's like that song, wasn't me. It wasn't me. No, it wasn't me. That's right. <laughs> it wasn't him or was it? Social media is calling that into question today. So it all started with a tweet from the president reacting to Roy Moore's Alabama law, saying the reason I originally endorsed Luther Strange and his numbers went up mightily is that I said Roy Moore will not be able to win the general election. I was right. Well, to people's surprise, a tweet from Anderson Cooper's account fired back saying, oh, really? You endorsed him, you tool, pathetic loser. Well, that, of course, went viral online, but CNN now is saying that Anderson Cooper did not write that. In a statement, he says his assistant inadvertently left his phone unlocked and unattended at the gym early this morning, and someone took the phone and sent the tweet. But because of CNN's contentious relationship with the president, some are saying the network is lying. One Twitter user says, I believe he would say something like that CNN hates the president mm. I don't know though I don't I find it hard to believe that Anderson Cooper would use the word tool yeah. in a tweet so know. I'm gonna believe CNN maybe, on maybe this it was one. supposed to be a direct message uh oh you know Those that has messages happened. tend to get people in trouble yes you know you're right All about right. that so uh, social justice warriors jingle bell is racist yes. what well boston.com spoke to a theater history professor who uh, revealed that jingle bells was originally performed in blackface that professor says the racial history of the song has remained hidden behind its local and seasonal affection. Blackface and racist origins have been subtly and systematically removed from its history. Well, a lot of folks on uh, social media just want to focus on the non-controversial aspect of the song. Eric says, for the love of Pete is nothing sacred. <laughs> I mean, really, that's insane. Yikes. All right. So uh, people tweeting about their failed attempts to make gingerbread houses. And I think we have some examples of those fails. Take a look at this. One Twitter user says, listen, I tried to make a gingerbread house. Okay, I tried. Uh, here's another gingerbread house fail. Oh, uh... Just add dinosaur. I like that. Very <laughs> creative. And lastly, another uh, person says, I was going to have the best homemade gingerbread house ever. Then it fell. Uh... That looks like it fell and then melted. The best That's part okay. is, though, is that it all tastes the same. Yes, and it's the effort that counts. That's right. E for effort. Still looks great. Thank you so much, <laughs> Carly. Have a great day. You too. Well, the time now is about 26 minutes after the top of the hour, and President Trump hoping to look more like Santa Claus come Christmas. Americans will see lower taxes and bigger paychecks beginning in February, just two short months from now. But our next guest says you don't have to wait until the new year to see results. The evidence is already out there. A major breakthrough for tax reform as Republican lawmakers reach a deal on the massive overhaul promised by President Trump. As a candidate, I promised we would pass a massive tax cut for the everyday working American families who are the backbone and the heartbeat of our country.
We want to give you, the American people, a giant tax cut for Christmas. Well, the president saying that some Americans could even start seeing more money in their paychecks as soon as February. Uh, joining me now to explain uh, how possible that really is is economist Peter Marisi. Thank you so much for joining us. We always love having you with us. Thank you. So let's take a look, and I'll get you to comment on this, some of the agreements between the House and the Senate versions that were apparently reached yesterday. Uh, cut the corporate tax rate to 21 percent, cut the top individual rate to 37 percent, $10,000 for the SALT cap, uh, eliminate Obamacare individual mandate, some of which we've already heard about, the House version, Senate version. This some of the agreements they've come to. What do you think? Well, I think on the whole, there are reasonable compromises between the two bills. We are going to get a substantial reduction in the corporate tax rate that should give a big boost to investing in the United States. Mm -hmm. Our taxes are much higher right now than in Europe, and this will get them into alignment. It is so significant, it's got the Chinese worried and making adjustments of their own in anticipation. Yeah. Uh, the lower personal income tax rate is very sorely needed because a lot of small businesses still pay that rate. Right. And would even with the with some of the pass-through provisions because of the phase-out. So I think that's very important, and it's also important for people in the Northeast who are going to have limitations on their state and local property tax deductions. Can I ask you a little bit more, though, about the corporate tax race? Because I was listening to, uh, from West Virginia, a mansion yesterday, he was on Cavuto, and, you know, he's usually a vote, Democrat, that can come over to the Republican side. You said, you know, he's an easy crossover, but he has some problems right now, still problems specifically with that corporate tax rate, and he was wondering why can't we just have it at 25%, more of a compromise, and then see how it goes for three years and see if it goes as planned. Well, for one thing, temporary tax cuts on the corporate side are not very effective because, as you know, being in the broadcast business, mm -hmm. investments, for example, in a network or investments in a steel mill or what have you, are long term. You have to know what your taxes are going to be over a 10, 20 year period to make good investment decisions. Number two, our taxes are right now some of the highest in the world. Heck, Sweden has a lower corporate tax rate than we do. As a consequence, we, we really going to 20 percent was hardly enough. 21, mm -hmm. 25 just isn't enough. It doesn't get the job done. It won't have the salutary effect on corporate right. investment that we need to have happen. And we you hope know, that the effect talks a good game. Right. Go ahead. But he's looking for an excuse. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he seems to be willing to compromise. Uh, what about the top individual income tax rate comparison? The House had it at 39.6, Senate 38.4, and they finally came up with 37 percent. We have been through two basic cycles of tax cuts and reform and so forth over the last two generations. The Reagan cuts, we had a big cuts, we lowered the rates, compressed the, the structure, and then Clinton came along and raised the individual rate to 39.6 percent. Mm -hmm. George W. Bush cut him again, and Barack Obama essentially restored the top corporate rate, and he added some other little wrinkles in the tax code that mean an awful lot of people, including one college professor right here, mm -hmm. has a marginal tax rate over 50 percent. At that level, along with the estate tax, that discourages mature Americans from working more. Mm -hmm. Simply, in my situation, I pay more than 50 percent of my marginal income in taxes then a lot of that money basically gets banked for, for my retirement and if i die by before 85 say it goes to my children who pay another 40 percent in estate tax right. why work we simply have corporate personal tax rates that are so high they're discouraging small business people like me right. from investing and working. But they then have my to question would be, I mean, they're coming down, true, but it appears to me that it's still the main, the main premise is the, the longer you work, the harder you work, the more you make, the more you're taxed. And that's what's uh, going to happen with this as well. Well, yes, but the point is, is that... The, the question is, how much more are you taxed? Okay. What is the marginal rate? What is the disincentive? To me, 37% is too high. But there simply wasn't enough money in this tax cut to ba do all these reforms yeah. and bring rates down enough. All this right. is half a loaf. Half a loaf. <laughs> so you get half a loaf for Christmas. But at least that's not a bag of coal, I guess. But it's, it, exactly. It's not a bag of coal, and it's not a Barack Obama empty plate. Okay. Hey, there you have it. Thank you so much. We always enjoy having you breaking it down for us. We'll see what happens next week, and we'll have you back. Take care. Thanks.
Well, leaders of 57 Islamic nations joining forces against President Trump and Israel, declaring his Jerusalem decision, quote, null and void, and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation holding an emergency summit after the president announced that the U.S. will recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. The OIC says they call the move a deliberate undermining of all peace efforts. Now, the group is demanding that Palestinians claim Jerusalem. Keeping Americans safe. That is the top priority for new Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen, who gave her first interview with our Brian Kilmeade at the U.S.-Mexico order. What happened in Port Authority this week? And if that's also an immigration migration situation, a chain migration situation. Yes. As Homeland Security Secretary, what's your role in that? Well, I think it's a, it's a couple things. I think we need to look at all of our visa programs and ensure, first of all, that they meet the requirements that Congress originally meant them right. to meet. We have a lot of fraud and abuse, uh, which decreases the ability of the people who need to come as part of that visa program to come. But I think it also just demonstrated that one bad apple, if you will, can, can cause a lot of problems. We were very lucky there was no fatalities, but we've got to increase vetting for everyone coming into this country is really what I take away from that. Well, you can catch the rest of that exclusive interview with Kirsten Nielsen today on Fox & Friends starting at 6 o'clock Eastern. So stay tuned for that. And Senator John McCain missing another day of Senate votes after being admitted to the hospital. He's being treated right now in Maryland for, quote, normal side effects from his brain cancer treatment. His daughter, Meghan McCain, comforted by former Vice President Joe Biden on The View. Your dad took care of my bull. Your dad, when he was a mill aide who worked with me, became friends with Bo. And Bo talked about your dad's courage, not about illness, but about his courage. Mm. Biden's son, Bo, died in 2015 from the same type of brain cancer. And our hearts go out to Megan. She worked with us here at Fox and Aunt Amber for a while. Megan, our prayers are with you. Well, Melania Trump is getting into the giving spirit this holiday season. The First Lady helped sort toys, and she made some Christmas cards with the children of military families at the annual Marine Corps Reserve's Toys for Tots charity drive in Washington, D.C. And she talked about the American spirit and the importance of giving. I've seen people from all over our great nation pitch in to help those who lost everything. And I want to challenge people to continue with that giving spirit over Christmas and in New Year. And toys for Tots is working to collect 7 million toys this holiday season. So help out if you can. Uh, the time now is about 20 minutes until the top of the hour. And a warning for parents, your baby's bed could catch on fire. Uh, the recall that you do need to know about. And the top Google search of the year, Hurricane Irma with Hurricane Harvey not far behind. So how are the victims faring today? We'll break down the problems being solved and the new challenges just beginning. And it's a challenge for the faithful every year, keeping Christ in Christmas.